Welcome to episode 93 of Tim Talk, the podcast about the DC animated universe co-created by Bruce Tim. I'm Chris Lord. I'm Cameron Dexter. And it has been a DC Comics heavy news week this it week. It is. Happy post-Batman day. Yes, happy after Batman day. Happy DC Universe is finally here day. Yay! We made it. Yeah, I've been l- spending a little bit of time looking at DC Universe. I think you've spent more time on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I did watch Batman Beyond on it. Uh, I I would have, except I saw you were watching, and I didn't want to... Can't... I, I I don't know if you can do concurrent, especially on the same episode. Yeah, it looked like it's had two... When I closed out of watching it, it looked like it had two continue watchings on there for the same episode. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Yeah. We're going to find out. Yeah, so I know on Crunchyroll, you can't... If I'm in the middle of watching an episode and someone else, because it's shared between like four or five people, yeah. Uh, if someone else starts that same episode, then it'll boot me to the beginning. Oh, okay. Ooh, interesting. We'll have to test this out. Yeah. We'll have to see how long before you get annoyed with me and make me pay for my own. I mean, I have other... I still have the DVDs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so do I. Yeah. But this it's is a who, lot it's more convenient. Who can watch it first. Exactly. <laughs> this is a lot more convenient. It is. And it's also great because now people have access to this. Like. Mm-hmm. Finally, people can go and watch Batman Beyond too if you haven't been, and you should be because it's so good. Yeah, but I mean, I I mean, I've been pretty impressed so far. I haven't spent a lot of time looking at the comics. I mean, what has your experience been with the DC Universe app so far? Um, it's it's great. It's there's a few there's a few things I'm kind of surprised weren't there. the The biggest ones being uh, for live action, Smallville is not there. That's surprising. And I'm curious who still because I think it was on. Amazon for a little bit. I feel like it, I remember it being I mean, on Netflix a long time ago. Yeah, and then I think it either jumped to either Hulu or Amazon for a while. Oh, and I think then it, so there might still be contract disputes with that. Um, Green Lantern, the animated series, is not on there, which I find really interesting. Yeah. Um, actually, a lot of the more recent, m- minus Brave and the Bold. Brave and the Bold is there, and it's mm-hmm. amazing. Um, a lot of the more recent animated stuff is not there like obviously teen titans go i think is still on, it's on and that's on hulu i know right yes yeah, so that's um, not going to be here for a while but where the batman which ended a few years ago did you ever watch that i did not yeah i never either i, I think it only ran, ran for like one season right like maybe two okay like it just i didn't much care for the art style and then i remember reading that they're going for a lot more like random villains like professor pig for example was a villain they had in there that's right i just remember it being very deliberately different than everything else it's like instead of robin it's katana I think it's Katana. And then it's Alfred wielding a shotgun, like going out and fighting crime with them. Good. And Good. I was just like... As he should. Yeah, I was like, mm, this all just seems a little bit funky. I wasn't quite into it. Yeah. Yeah, but the big ones are um, Green Lantern animated is not on there. Teen Titans Go is not on there. The Batman is not on there. And Beware the Batman is not on there. Oh, wow. Um, that is a lot, actually. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it's on Hulu, Smallville. Oh, is it still? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then that, Okay, then that makes sense. Okay, yeah. Um, but other than that, it's been pretty great. I don't know if they've fixed it, but if you use the app on your computer, um, I did notice there was a bug where it wouldn't let me scroll through all of the movies. The the like oh interesting like view all movies button wasn't yeah. working. Um, but on my phone and on the computer or on the TV, it worked fine. So what I mean, I was looking at it briefly. It looked like they had um, all the Batman movies through Nolan looks like they have a lot of the DC animated universe or I, not the DC animated universe, but the DC animated films. On it, there. I think they had all of them. I, oh, okay. Uh, I was going through and I couldn't think of one they missed. Okay. Cause I I'm a little bit behind. There's a few I've been meaning to catch mm-hmm. up on. So that's good. Yeah. Actually, I don't think I remember seeing assault on Arkham on there. That's one of the best ones. Mm-hmm. Did it have red hood, which is, it had red hood, the best one. It had red hood. Oh, it did not have war. That's what made me upset. Not no, War. What? Sorry. They did have War. It didn't have Doom, the one I always mix up with. Oh, that's another great one. That's one that I really wanted to rewatch. Yeah, that is one of the best ones as well. Yeah. Man, it's, it's weird. It seems like the, it's... I wonder if that's streaming somewhere, though. Maybe. You know what I can do? I can look it up. We can. Yeah. I have the power. Mm-hmm. Um, but then as for the, the comic side, that's what I find really interesting. Because they have a... A handful of stuff where it's full runs of like mini series. Okay. Like the the Grayson series, I think, is all on there, and then the Red Robin series, which is a very weird series. I'm I'm a little confused why of all comics that's the one they chose. Yeah, to Red go Robin with. of all things. Yeah, because that's. Did you ever read Red Robin? No, it's that's Tim Drake, right? Yeah, it's it's the post, post new okay New Fifty Two. 
No, no, not it's it's post Blackest Night where Batman is presumed dead. Oh, and okay. And it's how Tim Drake is handling it. Oh, that would be really good then. It's it's a interesting story because he because it's it kind of follows him talking with the other Robins mm-hmm. and all of them dealing with the loss of their mentor, and Tim just goes off the deep end and is like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna start killing people." Because obviously what Bruce is doing did not work. Shit. Yeah, and so he like starts using guns, and Dick comes in and tries to like top like talk him down, mm-hmm. and then they get in a big fight. Um. It, it's it's really i remember reading the first half of it okay um because that's when i actually read comics hey what it was a like thing. a nice six month stint yeah um but yeah it, it, i'll probably go back and reread that oh that's interesting because i feel like in the new and i'm sure i'm wrong but i feel like in new 52 or maybe since rebirth i feel like tim drake was now never the an official robin like he was always oh, just red robin off on his own i'm probably wrong about that okay i don't know my like my knowledge of the Pre New Fifty Two stuff is actually pretty damn good, but as soon as it started rebooting the universe, I just got completely <laughs> lost. <clears throat> yeah, um, but then the other thing about the comics is, um, as you would kind of expect, it's a lot of uh, starting like starting points. Oh, okay. So uh, the one that kind of was a little frustrating for me is Crisis of Infinite Earths, mm-hmm. which is one of my favorite series. The one that kind of booted the whole multiverse idea. Yeah. That's the uh, 80s, right? Yeah, 1985. Yeah. Uh, there's only... It's a 12-issue run, and they only have issues 2, 3, and 4. What? Not, not 1. What? Yeah. Like, what? I'm fine. Like 1, what? 2, and 3 would be fine. Yeah. But don't start at 2. Um, Wait, hang on. I mean, is it possible issue number 1 is just labeled as something different? So, for example, years ago... I was reading the Joss Whedon run on Astonishing X-Men. At the time, I downloaded them all on like off the Marvel app, Comixology app. Mm-hmm. And I got to basically the end. I got to like the end of the, the comics that were listed under that series. And then like, oh, but there's still more to go. Where the hell is this? And the last issue or two was listed as like giant size X-Men number something. Which okay. do. I don't know. Maybe that's what's it, going on there. It could be because with the comics, it feels very disorganized right now. Okay. Like I just clicked the view all comics. And the closest comparison I can get is, like, you just transferred your hard drive and you're re-uploading all of your music back to iTunes. Yeah. And none of it is synced up anymore. Oof. That's what it feels like with the comics. Okay. So it'll be, like, you'll have, like, three of the same... Because it'll just show the, the comic cover. Mm-hmm. You'll have three of the same cover, all with different names under them. Fuck. And then there'll be, like, repeats. You, I saw, like, arc, like um, a sane asylum... Like four oh, Arkham time- Asylum. Yeah, like four times, mm-hmm. and it's all just one issue each. And I'm like, this this feels very much like a very disorganized iTunes playlist. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have to go play around with that a little bit and see what they have in yeah. there. I, I will say, if you are trying, because I made a, a favorites list mm-hmm. just so I can get to the ones I want to read quickly. I would recommend if you're trying to do that, like open each of them in a different tab, because it's so hard to like find where you were again when scrolling oh through. i go back from favorites back into the main thing yeah because like, you can't oof. um you can't which is kind of upsetting because you can do this on pretty much every other streaming service you can't favorite from the launch page Ugh. you have to click like more details and then favorite i suppose we shouldn't be surprised that the comic section was probably the least developed before launch mm-hmm. i think they're probably most concerned with film and television oh, absolutely but, i mean which is I mean, because it seems like from that perspective, they're more or less delivering. Aside from content that we were expecting that's not on there, it looks like for various rights reasons. Right. Um, it seems pretty solid. Yeah. I mean, it, it has pretty much everything. Yeah. I, I mean, do you feel already that it's worth the cost? I would say, yeah. I, w- I would say you could, it's worth getting like three months worth of subscription. Yeah. Because that's, I think at that point, I would, if I was a casual person, I didn't have a podcast. We had to talk about it every week. You would have burned through pretty much would, most of it. I would have burned through all I, the stuff I wanted to rewatch. I also in three feel like months. you consume content at a faster rate than most people. Just a little bit. Yeah. It, wait, anything else DC universe specifically, or should we talk about the mess right now that is the DC extended universe? Um, I think that's everything. Uh, I think yeah, everyone should everyone should get the app now. Yeah, I, I think so. Mm-hmm, I, I think, think if you're if you're listening to this, clearly you're a Batman fan mm-hmm. or you're a loving member of my family. Um. <laughs> 
but get it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you can brush up on what we're talking about. Because it has BTOS, right? Of course it yes, does. Yeah. yeah, it has the entire Timbers. Does it have the Zeta Project? It does not have Zeta Project. God damn it. I know. We're going to have to still have to deal that's with that That's like one. the the red-headed stepchild of that whole universe, the one everyone's trying to forget. Yeah. It's the cousin Oliver of that universe. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Unimore TV tropes. Who else is it? Oh, God. I don't know. The Poochie <laughs> of that universe. Who is um, Scooby's... Co- Scrappy-Doo. No, not Scrappy, but Scooby oh, had like, an entire like the, family. Like the hillbilly cousin, the gray yeah. one with like the red hat and jacket? Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's your forte, Dopey, not mine. Dopey-Doo? Dope, that sounds right. Let's say it was Dopey-Doo. Sure. Yeah. I don't know he has a full family. Like, I saw his family tree. Um, Where? Online. Oh, okay. Yeah. But throughout the series, throughout, like, um, Scooby and Shaggy Adventures and uh, the... Wait. What? Wait, I mean, Scooby's a purebred Great Dane, right? Yes. Okay. D- <laughs> Is oh, his no, Dino Mutt. Oh, I love Dino Mutt. Is his family tree like worryingly shy of branches? Like, is there a lot of inbreeding that's going on in there to maintain the pure breed? I, I now that I think, I, I'm, I'll pull it up really quick. <laughs> I don't think there was actual like the the family tree. I think it was just like his cousins. Okay. Because I'm like, well, shouldn't he also have a shitload of siblings? Yeah. One presumes he came from a litter, unless like the talking gene only happened sporadically in the line <laughs> so uh yankee doodle do there's a there's a quote on the side that says possible asexual reproduction <laughs> so they don't even go into it yankee doodle do <laughs> great gam great grandpa ezekiel do granddad do uh daddy do and mommy bouvier onesis do i don't know with that one um oh no it's um Mama, oh, it's it's probably Mama Bouvier Onassis. Yes, which that's is a, it. a play off of Jackie Kennedy Onassis. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Or maybe it was Bouvier Kennedy Onassis. Uh, so then the the cousins and the siblings. You have Scooby and his brothers. Yabadoo is the the hillbilly. Okay. Howdy do, Skippy do, and Ruby do. Well, that just seems redundant. Uh, who is? Oh no! Wait, we're how, thinking, sorry, we're thinking Scooby Dumb is the, is oh, the, is the okay. dumb one. Oh, okay. Wait, how does Ruby Doo say his own name? Like, is Scooby Doo the only one with the speech impediment? Probably. Okay, but then if Scooby is talking to Ruby, wouldn't he call them both Ruby? Yeah, that's just dumb. But he wouldn't know. He would be saying Scooby in his head. But it was just everyone else would think he's talking about his cousin, sister. Because Ruby Doo is Scrappy's mom. Okay, it w- but maybe when he calls. Ruby, her name, he accidentally mispronounces it Scooby. Maybe he just is crazy and thinks that she's always with them. Oh. So whenever he says <laughs> Ruby Doo, Ruby do, he's just calling out to his estranged sister. Like Scoop. Oh um, no. There you go. That's that's the the do family tree. The do. <laughs> oh, this this oh my god, it got bigger. Oh no, it didn't. It's just oh, thank all god. the all the missing links. Okay, thank God. Uh, because we do, we do have some stuff to talk about in terms of the DC extended universe. I guess so. Okay, so where where do you even begin? All right, the Thanos snap finally made it to the DC universe. And yeah, we lost I saw that one, maybe two. Yeah. So beyond the fact that we still don't know if Ben Affleck is coming back or not, and we don't know yet whether the Batman movie being written by Matt Reeves is set um, around that same present timeline or in the past. Uh, if it's in the past, there were rumors about Kit Harrington mm. playing Batman, which I think is a really good choice. Yeah, I could see him doing like a year one Batman. Yeah, like really young. The problem is we've already done that. Yeah, like I don't, I don't think I they forgot. can make year one. Like I feel like you, you could do another series of films with him as a really young, inexperienced Batman, which might be a good way to like also differentiate it from what's going on currently, um, and maybe make it a little more Batman esque, unlike everything that Zack Snyder did. But part of, the, part of the problem is, I, I guess in this universe he could... Well, no, I guess if he's been doing this for 20 years, and he's probably, what, 45 in BVS? Oh, oh yeah, let's, let's, let's say 50. Because he's a little older and gruffer. Okay, so okay, yeah. So then, I mean, he would have been... I guess they could try and say he would have been in his, like, mid-20s, early 30s. Mm-hmm. But Kit Harrington looks like he would be in his early 20s on screen. But so, I mean, that's the magic of makeup. 
That's true. Yeah. I think he'd be a great choice. Absolutely. Of course, John Hamm, everyone keeps throwing around, including maybe himself, for taking over. I just want to see him do Riddler. John Hamm as the Riddler? Yeah. That's a weird one. I, it'd be a, a more, like, polished Riddler. Yeah. But I, I just imagined him in the suit with the cane. Just <laughs> smoking a cigarette and just yeah. looking very contemplative. And, and, yeah, just not being, like, the zany. Yeah. Like, being the exact opposite of Jim Carrey's Riddler. Yeah. Just very poised in the uh in the, like the nice green suit mm-hmm. uh with the bowler hat and everything just and sitting like, there drinking me a, this batman drinking a scotch yeah waxing philosophical about kodak yeah yeah basically just yeah mad men yeah pretty much but gone crazy yeah I, I, that'd be an interesting one i i do think he would be a good batman mm-hmm. i like to see him take it if possible but so there's that uh then there's also I guess, I guess we call it a rumor that Henry Cavill's out as Superman. I haven't seen anything definitive saying he is. Oh, I thought it was confirmed at this point. No, I mean, THR broke the story, but we haven't gotten any real confirmation. Like, I don't think anyone at Warner Brothers or even Henry Cavill himself has made any comments on it. He posted on, I think it was his Instagram, a photo of him wearing, like, a Krypton shirt and holding a Superman figure being like, today was super exciting and, like, doing some weird pantomime thing. But no definitive confirmation that he's actually out. The other thing that I read was it's not so much that he's out. It's just that there are no projects truly in development that include Superman. And as such, he is out in the sense that there's nothing being made with him in it now. But also one of the rumors was that he was supposed to cameo in Shazam and that didn't happen. Right. So maybe it might've been him asking for an exorbitant amount of money for that cameo. If it wasn't originally in his contract. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. Cause I I don't think he's bad. I think his movies are right. Yeah, he's he's a good. It's the same with uh, Brandon Roth. He's a great yeah. Superman. Yeah. He just got a shitty script. Yeah. He just got saddled with bad projects. So mm-hmm. I mean, I you know I would love. I still would love to see in their newly undead version of him that's like way more chipper. I'd love to see a movie that with him with a slightly new take on his persona in the hands of a director who actually understands the character and knows how to do action well. Something like a Matthew Vaughn, I think, would be interesting. Obviously, have him with his natural-looking face mm-hmm. would certainly help. Because um, I think he's a good actor. I liked him a lot in both uh, Mission Fallout and then also uh, The Man from U.N.C.L.E. Yes, I was going to bring that one up. I, I really like that movie. Uncle. Like, I really like it. I get why it didn't do great. Mm-hmm. And I think it was a little bit saddled with trying to do an origin story. That guy Richie? That guy Richie, yeah. Okay. But I thought it was a lot of fun. And I, I wanted to see another one. I'm like, okay, now that we've established these characters, can we just let them go and play and, and have a fun time? Has Guy Ritchie had a successful movie in the past 10 years? Ooh, God. I don't. Because I really uh, love well, his okay, style. Okay, so I think Sherlock Holmes, the oh, that's first right. one, which yeah, was yeah, yeah. 2009. Nine, I want to say somewhere around there was his last big success. And mm-hmm. I think since then he's been kind of aping his own style a little bit. Like I watched Sherlock Holmes what was a game of shadows or whatever. The second one. Yeah, it was okay. I didn't really love it. Um, and then did he do rock and roll? I feel like at one point, I don't know. Cause I, then, I remember Sherlock Holmes one and two. Yeah. Well, loved he, man from uncle. Yeah. I liked it a lot. I didn't see King Arthur cause it looks terrible. It, <laughs> The the more I sit on it, the more I, like, want to like that movie. Yeah. <laughs> Just because, like, I, I mean, I brought it up two weeks ago, though, like, no oh, one understands yeah. King Arthur anymore. And I just want a good King Arthur story. I know. I know. I watched, I watched another really bad version the other day uh, called Avalon High. And it was a, a decom that had slipped through my fingers a few years ago. My God, how is that possible? I know, uh, but it's about a, a high school where all of the all of the students are like reincarnated people from Camelot. Okay. Oh uh, Jesus. Yeah, and so the football so team are the so it's RBC. Clone High, but King yeah. Arthur mm, in I'm live out. action. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> okay, so uh, his filmography: mm-hmm. Lock, Sock, and Two Smoking Barrels. In 1998. And then Snatch. Love Snatch. Uh, Madonna, What It Feels Like to Be a Girl. Feels Like for a Girl, which is a, a short, like a music video, mm-hmm. obviously. Oh, he did one of my all-time favorite of the BMW films. Did you ever see any of those? Like the early 2000s. So. Uh, basically, BMW. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, BMW teamed up with a whole bunch of 
big name directors at that time to make stuff. So he did Star, which is Clive Owen, obviously, as the driver, transporting Madonna around in an E39 M5, which is one of the greatest BMWs ever made. Uh, and it's just a, basically a car chase, the whole thing. It's really, really good. Um, Swept Away, Revolver, Rock and Rolla, Sherlock Holmes, mm-hmm. Sherlock Holmes 2, um, The Man from Uncle King Arthur. Okay, so... Four upcoming projects. Yeah. Oh, he's doing Aladdin. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, he's doing Aladdin. <laughs> Great. Sure. <laughs> That'll be interesting. Um, yeah, they're going to find a way to shoehorn a Vinnie Jones cameo into Aladdin. Uh, oh, well, my I mean, God. Wait, hang on. Wouldn't it be amazing if Vinnie Jones is the voice of Iago? Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, I'm on board. Um, I'm so on board. I mean, that movie's already gotten in trouble for a number of things. Oh, yeah. Like, didn't they just put a bunch of spray tan on a whole bunch of extras yep. to try and pretend that they were Millie We're Eastern? not white. Yep. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Good job, Disney. <laughs> Going to be interesting. Uh, why are we talking about Guy Ritchie? Oh, we were talking about Henry Cavill. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think... I mean, the, the thing is, all this stuff we take with a grain of salt, right? Like, mm-hmm. what does it fucking matter? It's all going to change. I think it was last week we were talking about Alec Baldwin being Thomas Wayne for 24 hours, right? Yep. It's just like... They are clearly just throwing stuff at the wall. Here's what I think is happening over at DC. They mm-hmm. have a 19, no, 17 year old kid who went to Comic Con once, and he is the only one in charge of social media there. He's the uh, intern. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They locked him in a closet, <clears throat> and no one is paying attention to what he's doing. So he is just writing basically his fan fiction for what the DC universe should be in his brain of like, oh yeah, Alec Baldwin. He's Thomas Wayne now. Yeah. And then he just posts it, and then it it's, just takes however long for someone else at the company to be like, what? No, Mike, don't do that. Yeah. You can't post that it, stuff. It takes about 24 hours for then all of the agents and managers and representatives and lawyers. Like, no, 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 this is all untrue. By the time they've like put out that fire, he's done another one. They haven't had yeah. time yet to actually fire him right because he just keeps fucking things up yeah he's locked himself in the room with the only computer that's logged into their social media yeah it's like oh they look at it, it's like oh my god we got to get in contact with henry cavill kit harrington joaquin phoenix mm-hmm. alec baldwin john ham it's like hey guys guess what we have seven joker movies coming out yeah. <laughs> actually speaking of which we just got the first official look of joaquin phoenix as arthur yeah in the joker film mm-hmm I, uh, so is it supposed to be Killing Joke? I don't think so. I mean, kind of. Because he he resembles the flashback of, of pre-Joker Joker. Joker. The Joker in the Killing Joke before he becomes the Joker always looked like Lyle Lovett. I don't know who that is. Oh my God. Youth. I've been doing so well with it. I got the BMW reference. I've seen that short. Cut me some fucking slack. <laughs> I did this for you. <laughs> well, I love it. He's a, he's a singer, and he acts sometimes, too. I feel like he did a movie with, I was like, Julia Roberts at some point. Um, here, here we go. Here we go. Well, I love it. I mean, would have made a good Joker in of itself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and actually, I think I have it on the bookshelf. Keep talking. I'll grab a photo okay. for comparison. So. Uh, but yeah, I, the photo came out, and I think it looks more like the ventriloquist than a Joker. Yeah, he kinda does. He has he has these kind of like sunken eyes. Uh he he just kinda looks like a guy who's completely down on his luck and just needs a puppet friend to tell him what to do. Yeah, he Okay, he, never mind, I don't have the comic in my room. <laughs> I'll have to bring up another photo. Hang on. Um killing joke. Yeah, okay, here we go. Found it. All right. So there we go. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see I see. There's it. early Joker. Mm-hmm. There's Lyle Lovett. Yeah, I like, see it. I'm gonna have to post this to like Instagram as proof. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's a spot on comparison. But yeah, Walking Phoenix. I don't know. He's got this whole. He does come up with the patrol glass. He's got this kind of weird look to it. I mean, what is he it? Just looks sad. I know. What the thing is, what does it matter? It doesn't. Like, I guess the irony is that what this movie seems to be is an Elseworld story. Something we keep saying we would love to see them do. So and now that we're getting it, we're and now that we're getting it, we're complaining about it nonstop. I mean, this is the most like this is the most superfluous film since Solo. <sighs> yep. But and we know how well that went. Yeah, it went great for everybody. I, I mean, I guess it is what it is. I don't like. I am just curious about it more than anything else. So, um, okay, I have one last little thing that I want to talk about. Okay, and it's still DC Comics related. 
Did you see the clip they released this week, the preview clip for Titans, where Dick Grayson meets Jason Todd? I did. Because do you see? did you see who was, uh, who was talking about the clip? No, who was talking about the clip? Our friend Hector Navarro. Oh! Yeah, they, they announced who, because like, through the streaming service, they're going to do daily DC updates. Yeah. Um, so our job is completely unnecessary, or a lot hasn't easier it, now. Hasn't always been, though. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but they announced all the hosts for the, the daily DC updates, mm-hmm. and Hector was chosen, which is awesome. That's incredible. That's yeah. great. Yeah, super happy for him. Right and on. another friend, Whitney, who I don't think you've ever met. I don't think so. Just met her through other random channels. Okay. Nice. Yeah, super awesome. Well, good. They can do this for us. I mean, they, they do, because they get paid to do this. Mm. But it's fine. We don't, so we can do whatever the fuck we want. <laughs> That's true. We can we're, curse, and they can't. We're accountable to no one. That's right. Uh, okay, shall we finally now get into our episodes <laughs> this week? Let's do it. Okay, so we had the return of Ink. We did. Which is really exciting. Both these episodes were kind of just okay. Yeah, they're they're fine. I don't think they're spectacular. There's some moments I really like in both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, did you also get really frustrated trying to figure out who the voice actor was in Disappearing Ink for the, the loser? What's his name? No. Who is he? It It's William H. Macy. And okay. I was listening like, this is driving me crazy. And I could just, I could kind of picture an older guy. But I kept thinking, like, Brian Cranston. I'm like, no, it's not Brian Cranston. Fuck, who is this? Who is this? Who is this? And eventually I gave up and I looked it up. I was like, oh, love William H. Macy. There's a great job. Um, we have yet another just weird creeper guy in this universe. Mm-hmm. Lots of just creepy, obsessive. Even in Batman Beyond, we've already had a few, right? Because we had um, Willie Watts was obsessed with Blaze. Yeah. Blade. Let's go. I think Blade. He's Blade. Obsessed with her. Uh, this guy's obsessed D-Z-E. with Ink. Um, and then at the end, we have the the new prison guard obsessed with with obsessed with him. I I mean I think in a less sexual way. It's oh fair, yeah. It's fair to say I think she's just happy to have someone to talk to. Um, actually, you know what? okay, jumping straight to the end there. Did you feel that moment was a little tonally weird or just like a little? Was it? I feel like that moment especially showed its age with just like this frumpy woman shows up and she keeps talking about like how the doctor took her warts off and how so happy she was to have someone to talk to. Mm-hmm. And it just felt like it, it was, I think it was just a little shoehorned cause I, they wanted to mimic this first scene. Yeah. It, it just felt a little, I don't know to me, it felt like a little bit misogynistic or a little bit like they were, having the joke was at her expense i didn't i didn't get that oh okay maybe i'm just like social justice warrior crazy these days and i just can you can you calm down there (laughs) trying i'm sorry Uh, i don't know i don't know Mm. no i I thought it was a fine way to end it okay i mean i guess yeah it's i guess what i do like about what they're doing with this show in general is that they're trying for the most part to kind of like balance out the comeuppance Mm -hmm. a little bit that both, what's the guy's name? The character's name? Do you even remember? I just wrote prison guard. Okay, for, yeah, like the the, the cryo engineer, the prison guard. His name, whatever it is, he, you know, he's not completely innocent. Like, they definitely don't portray him in a purely positive light. He is a, a victim of the situation, but also he goes along with it and yeah. is part of. The, like, well, he caused the situation. That's right. He caused he's all the this. one that unfroze her and i guess he just did that to be vindictive right yeah, just be a like, dick yeah i don't think i don't think because he wasn't ever planning on seeing her again he's just like oh guess what's gonna happen now you guys mm-hmm. um yeah i like that they made him kind of morally middle ground yeah and until the end where he's just like oh i did this because i want to be like you yeah which i think i think that's what kind of came out of left field for me in this episode a little bit i wasn't sure because it started I, off as a romantic thing like he he saw her as like someone to talk to yeah someone he wanted to be with and then then it she gets freed ink gets free goes to his place and he's still kind of wanting something like that Mm -hmm. and she shuts him down real shuts him down and then they go to the chemical plant and he's like oh no i freed you because i wanted your i wanted your ability yeah that did come out of nowhere a little bit Mm -hmm. i feel like they just had to go somewhere with it they just needed to do something with him yeah I, it, that's pretty gross when he, it's disgusting. Gets real weird and blobby and it's yeah. like, oh, I only got half the treatment. Oh, it's, it's thoroughly disgusting. Yeah. Now I, but I also like how they 
portray Ink here because she's out. She has her own agenda. Obviously, she's trying to like basically reconstitute herself because her DNA is breaking down. But it was weird. I'm very curious how her getting frozen fucked up her DNA. Well, I mean, she froze and then she broke into a million pieces. Yeah, but I mean, but she can pull herself back together like that. But like, it, I don't know how it messed up her DNA. Like, I can understand if the process that made her who she is then degrades her over time, which actually that's something that comes into, I think, in the show, but certainly in actually the, the comics came out afterwards. We actually had a whole backstory to Ink, okay. which is really interesting. Um, that would make sense to me. Like, her DNA is breaking down. The, this was... I think you're saying that because this was very much the Clayface episode retold. Yeah, that's, that's basically true. To, this, to the point where she does the same move that Clayface does. Where oh, trying like grabs oh, him yeah. and tries to suffocate him by putting Batman in... Like, in herself. Yeah, absorbing him into her and, like, suffocating. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. the exact same thing that it, Clayface Yeah, did. I guess it is the exact same plot line. Oh, and actually, no, hang on. Yeah, because there also, there was that, um, like, that nurse who fell in love with Clayface, right? Wasn't that a thing at one point? Um, like, it was, I want to say his, his first reappearance after his introduction, where he realizes that he can drink a chemical that makes him a little bit more solid. And there's a nurse who like falls in love with him and keeps going out and trying to get the chemicals. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to look this up. I'm pretty sure that was a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it's still a great episode, but it's, it's, it's a story we've already seen. We have already seen. I mean, I, there, what I do like is we're getting a little bit more history between Bruce and Terry. Like, I like the fact that Bruce won't tell him why he quit being Batman. Right. Um, I mean, we know why with the gun. Mm -hmm. I, I'm curious, why do you think Bruce wouldn't tell him that? Do you think he's just, like, holding on to something just so he has something to hold on to? Or do you think there's a good reason for him not to tell Terry what happened? I, I think Bruce wants to hide the fact that Terry can't do this forever. Because, like, in the next episode, I think we get that a little more from Barbara, mm -hmm. where she's telling Terry, like, this isn't something that should last forever. Yeah. Where Bruce can't see that. And so he doesn't want to show that to Terry, that, like, one day you won't be able to do this anymore. But, I mean, I feel like the part he's keeping back from him wasn't that he got too old. Because he mentions that. He mentions, like, oh, I had this exosuit that was too much to turn in my heart. It's, I think what he's referring to there is pulling the gun. No, yeah. I, I agree with that. I'm saying that, like him needing to pull the gun was because he was getting old. Oh, uh, okay, hang on also real quick. Um, Clayface returned a few months later, but was falling apart. Um, the formula was destabilizing his structure. He visited Dr. Stella Bates. Oh, yeah, a doctor had worked on his film as medical consultant and that she had fallen in love with him. More specifically, his screen persona. Mm -hmm. And he manipulated her by reciting his lines That's until right, she okay, keeps I that. getting him the formula to save himself. And, um, da, 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 made, oh, amplify, yeah, and he's weakened because he gets absorbed with like, tons of rainwater, made him slow. Um, Which is exactly what happened he, to him. He falls off a cliff to his presumed death out in the ocean. So, yeah, it's basically. And she fell down the sewer drain. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, it's basically the exact same thing. What, what episode would that have been? Um, Feet of Clay. Oh, no. Yeah, I guess Feet of, Feet of Clay or Mudslide. Mudslide. Okay, yeah, Mudslide. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, uh, Feet of Clay was the two-parter. That's right. Okay, yeah. That's right. Let's talk about cameos. Yeah, okay, so we have already seen this before. Yeah. <laughs> but, but... It's still great. It's still great. And I think... So, there's a couple things that I liked. One, I liked that they're... The bat suit. That we'll get to the bat suit. <laughs> My God, we'll have to get to the bat suit. I liked that there was a lot of discussion of continuity. So, one, Bruce mentioning the exosuit had a strain on his heart. That's something we saw in the pilot. Two, then talking about... Uh, Ink's last appearance, he, Bruce gives Terry the freeze gun to use again. She talks about, um, like, once being hired to kill Batman, or even just the fact that Terry sealed up the Batcave. Mm -hmm. Like, they never really played out anywhere, but as them acknowledging they had to address that bit of history, that bit of continuity, which I think, I feel like that's something they would often just gloss over back in BTOS. Yeah. Like, here they're getting a little more set up. Okay, I just got to follow along with this a little bit well, more closely. Well, I, I see it as... Terry's afraid and this is the first time we don't see him kind of like full of confidence going into a fight yeah that Terry lost this fight multiple times it's true and he just doesn't want to deal with it yeah like he wants to stay away and just he doesn't want to go to her he just wants to make sure she can't get to him well and one could also say too that 
this early on, so they mentioned that it's been six months he's been doing this. In that time, arguably one of his greatest failures would have been letting her get into the Batcave. Yeah. And the fact that they both came so close to getting killed, that their secret got so close to being revealed. Like, you can see him carrying that guilt and wanting to be really particular about not letting something like that happen again. Mm-hmm. Now, also, to be fair, if she knew where the entrance to the Batcave was, she'd be like, well, that's interesting. It's sitting underneath Wayne Manor. Yeah. Huh. Sitting underneath this house with an old man. Yeah. And he, I would say maybe people forgot about Bruce Wayne, but no, they obviously still know who he is because of Wayne Powers. And yeah. Bruce himself is in the news all the time. Maybe she just doesn't watch the news. I don't think she cares. No, she probably doesn't give a shit. She just wants to kill them. Mm-hmm. But yes, it, uh, it did give us, I think, for me, the coolest moment so far in Batman Beyond, which is when she's captured Terry and she insists that Bruce come in. And when he shows up, he deploys the exoskeleton bat suit. What? Why are you laughing? It's just such a. It's such. I had the toy. That's why I'm laughing. They I, made a toy I, of that suit. I'm pretty sure. <gasps> what? I'm. I'm like ninety percent sure I had that toy. It might have been like a McDonald's toy. I but I'm pretty sure I had it. I don't think so. I would. I feel like I would have remembered this because I had a whole bunch of the Batman Beyond toys. Um, exo suit toy. Because I, cause I, I had not seen this episode before, but I remember the suit. I had definitely seen the suit before. Um, um, oh, my God. Maybe you're right. Because I am seeing a toy on here. Maybe that's a custom toy? Where, what is that? I'm so curious now. I, it's, now I'm like just looking at the Batman Beyond toys that came out back in the day. They were, by and large, pretty shit. Um... And I can't remember if I actually... I think I actually did own this one. It's this really weird, like, green and yellow suit, but it comes yeah. with Ace, which is fucking fantastic. Um, maybe I didn't own... Because, yeah, I'm looking at the photos, and it does look very homemade. So maybe I didn't own it, I, yeah. and I might have just seen this somewhere else. It, yeah, but it, I've definitely seen the exosuit before. I think it. I think it is a homemade toy. Yeah, I think it did pop up in some places. Um, I don't know. I think, it's, I think it's cool. But I think that moment, though, when it deploys, and then they play the original series leap motifs that's just mm-hmm. so fucking cool yeah like i i got all kinds of like squee when that happens <laughs> just hardcore squee yeah oh, that's really it's really cool we did get another look into like another area of the bat cave where we got to see riddler's costume this time i feel like we've seen his costume i, I couldn't remember if we saw it last time i think time. we did see it even when they attacked the when she attacked the trophy room okay which Bruce has diligently put back together. Oh, because he has nothing else to do during the day. It's actually true. What else is he going to do all the time? Mm-hmm. Um, I did love... So there, there was definitely those moments where like, oh, this is going to come back around. So one, of course, is them showing off the exosuit. The other one for me was when the establishing shot of that old gymnasium, that old stadium, whatever it was, uh, was the skylight with rain pouring on. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, that skylight's absolutely getting broken yeah. at some point. Still a cool moment, though. Breaks free, throws the batarang. Mm-hmm. Crack that shit open. Yeah, and then you have the I'm melting scene. And then the other one that was really kind of gross, I guess this was before the rain scene when they're still trying to get the chemicals. Mm-hmm. And she gets hit with the electric batarang. Oh, yeah. And you see the, the love struck guy like try and pick her up, and he just picks up goo. It just falls apart? Yeah. Yeah. Like, that was that was really cool they and how they did such a good job with the like the transition because like it's been long enough for me that i don't exactly remember how well ink moved in the first episode yeah and so seeing it here i'm just like oh yeah that's how she moved last time Mm -hmm. and then when she takes the chemical and you do see that like instant shift of like try like her movement is goopy and a little slow Mm -hmm. to now it's very like um not stiff but like What's the word I used? Um, it, it's it's very like clean. And, oh, like, okay. Hit like uh, oh yeah. It's, okay, it's a yeah. Lot smoother. Yeah, they did a good job with that of actually visually showcasing how snappy. That's Sna- the word I was like. Ooh, for. snappy. Yeah, her mm. movement is is much more just like like oh right. Yeah. That the the comparison. I think I might have told this story before. I was. Um, it's like you know slapping someone with a wet noodle. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like what. <laughs> no, I was I, gonna say I was at a. Aren't you? I was it could at have been a, much worse. I was at a Disney event, and 
there was it was a bunch of cast members and then it was they were doing performances being judged by various people in the Disney community. Mm-hmm. One of which was the voice of Mickey Mouse. Oh, okay. Who's a super cool guy. Uh, but you you could hear all the people doing their impression of Mickey and you're like, oh right, that's what Mickey sounds like. Yeah, that that's a that's a pretty good impression. Yeah. And then the real voice of Mickey comes on the mic and you're like, oh no, yeah. that's Mickey. Yeah. Everyone else, that's not Mickey. Get the fuck out. Yeah. Nice try. Yeah, it's that that's my comparison for the movement. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like movement for your ears. Sure. <laughs> Just how my memory works. What else do we want to talk about with this? I don't know. I mean, I just, I I agree with you. I think it's not a great episode, Mm -hmm. but I still liked it quite a bit. Um, And I think it gives us enough cool moments. I think Ink's just generally a good villain. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That I I was on board with it, um, even if I didn't love the the final sequence there, the final scene. Yeah. I don't know. I I mean, of these two, though, which was your preference as we move along to a touch of Karate? Karate? Um... I don't know. They were both. Th- I think I liked the second one better because I liked hearing Barbara's side of everything. Yeah. I think that was definitely the strongest thing here. I think as a villain, Curare is interesting, if not great. I wanted to know what was under the mask. I Oh, I meant to look that up, what the deal was. Because I wanted to, until Bruce later said like, oh, she's the best that the society has. I didn't want to hear that. I wanted Curare to be like another 15 year old. And this is her first kill. Oh, okay. Like she's an amateur. Yeah, that could have been an interesting way to go. Um, because then you now you have another group of people who are better than her. Because if you say she's the best, now the entire society of assassins we know are less than Batman because Batman was equal to Karare. Yeah. What I was trying to figure out was never start at the top. Yeah, I started so at the bottom. Started at the bottom, and um, then. Drake said it best. So she's she does have another appearance. In Interesting. Final cut, which I think is when the assassins like trying to hunt her down. I was trying to figure out too: is the Society of Assassins is that's an offshoot of the, of League, of the League of League of Assassins? Oh yeah. I don't think so. Do we? Just a question about Batman Beyond in general. Is, does the League of Shadows still exist? Um, Do we still have Talia and anyone? We learn more about what happens. Yes. Okay. We we will learn more about what happens with Talia and Roz between. Oh right. No, I remember. Okay. Yeah, I I I saw I, that part was spoiled for me already. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. I guess like. I guess we'll save it. Yeah. We'll save it later. But yeah, we, we do get more about what happened to the two of them. But I, I was looking up the League of, or this Society of Assassins. I didn't see anything that explicitly said that it was related to the League of Assassins. So one presumes maybe it's an offshoot or its own thing. I also don't think we ever actually get a look at Karare's face. Because um, I was looking that up. I'm like, oh, did, did she, when she makes a reappearance, did we see it again? And I don't think so. But she definitely had some weird um, kind of elephant man thing going on Mm -hmm. which was kind of bizarre um i just imagined it was uh kind of like luchador not tradition but like rules no well what's the word i'm looking for where like if you're a luchador you never reveal your face oh i I don't know sure (laughs) honor so this was like i guess a, a concept art released by the creators I can, yeah. I can post this, post this too. That's, but even this doesn't quite look like what we saw in the, the show. It, it kind of looked like she had a really tall, squared off forehead, and one eye looked kind of buggier than the other one. We even, I don't remember even seeing the front of her face. You kind of saw it at a glance. Oh, I, like, I just wasn't paying that much attention. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, we rewound it. Like, wait, do we see a lot of her? And we don't really get much of it. But And she definitely had like bits of hair kind of hanging off, but it wasn't like a full head. So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's so interesting that they would have, what? (laughs) I was thinking about Luchador still. And in the Jackie Chan adventure series, there is a Toro Fuerte. Oh yeah. His, his line is always a Toro Fuerte never reveals his face. And And he never does, right? He does, uh, twice. 
Oh, oh. Because initially he has the the ox talisman, which is why yeah. he's such a good wrestler. And so... Where was the talisman? It was like embedded in the mask or something? Or yeah, what? embedded in his forehead. Okay. Uh, and the, where, how did he have room in his forehead for that? No, it was exterior. Oh, like mouse on the outside? Mm-hmm. That seems it's dangerous. Like a, it's like a gym. Yeah. yeah, but like that sort of thing will just get cracked open in the middle of a fight. Those talismans were big. Yeah, but hard to break. But they're like the size of a hockey puck. No, they're not that big. But they're like... No, because they fit in a kid's hand. Yeah, I mean, a hockey puck would fit in... No, but like like this size hand, not like this size. But hand, even then, they they had to be a good at least what like half an inch to an inch thick. Like you just had that yeah. protruding off the top of your mask. I'm looking this up. How big are talismans? Yeah, <laughs> like I'm looking up how big the talismans were. I'm gonna guess they were because they because the first one was found in inside of a shield, and I'm that was I'm gonna guess they're like uh, four inches wide. Okay, I'm looking at El Toro Loco Fuerte. Fuck it, whatever. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> See, that's El Pollo Loco. Uh, okay. Um, El Toro Fuerte. They're yeah, pretty small, yeah. I'm looking at a photo. Oh, yeah, it's, okay, it's, it's like, I guess they're not much bigger than, like, his eye. Yeah. But also, like, where where is there room for that in a mask? I assumed it was just, like, glued to, the, to his forehead because his symbol was the ox. Yeah, it basically is. It doesn't look good, though. And he was... He was all powerful because he had the talisman. Yeah, oh, I, I remember. <laughs> okay, yeah. You don't need to show me a photo. I I have a very photogenic memory of this show. It does. I mean, it doesn't look great. It's mm-hmm. a it's a weird look. Mm-hmm. How would you? I don't even. Then his his number one fan Paco, who apparently he just brings along with him wherever he goes. Yeah, that's not weird at all. No, it's totally normal. Because I I forget most of the time that Paco is not related to El Toro Fuerte. He's just oh, a fan. Oh, that's right. He's just along He's for the, just a fan. He's just along for the ride. Yeah. Hmm. That that's weird, right? Been... <laughs> like it makes sense for Jade to be there because she's related to Jackie. Yeah, but Paco is just a fan. I mean, do, do they become like series regulars at some point? I feel like were they in a lot later on? Yeah, in in season three. So season one was talisman. The talisman. Season, season two, two was... was the boxes. I thought that was the animals. No, season um, season two was the box because they the talisman still existed season three was the animals okay because that's when the talismans break yeah and they're trying to recreate them season four is the masks which is my favorite season <gasps> oh yeah that's right and then season five is um uh oh god who's the villain sh- uh sh- not shinron that's dragon ball z um it, it's sh- sh- What's, what's his name, Chris? Uh, I, I don't know. You mo gwe fi fi ti sao? Yes, that. that uh, uh, oh my god, this is driving me crazy. I'm looking it up. I'm looking it's, it up. It's the main villain's son from the future comes back what? in time. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And they, they kind of redo the second season where he's trying to get all the powers of his family members. Uh, okay, Shendu. Shendu. Yeah, Shendu Jr. Oh my god. Oh, wait, is there's also like wait, is Shindu Jr. is he the the wizard looking dude? No. No, Shindu was Shindu Jr. That's, was a green dragon. Who's Oh, that uh, begins with an M, I want to say. There's but, Dylon Wan. Dylon Wan. He's like weird claws in his Yes, yeah, so he was season 3. And then oh, it's oh, Terracuda was the villain. Season 4. I love Terracuda. Oh, yes, oh, Valmont was like the leader of the gang. Mhm. Hakfu. Yep. Th- those were the the uh, Jesse and James. Oh, there are all these other sorcerers. That's right. I forgot. Okay, yeah, that's right. I forgot about Drago. Of course, it's Drago. Yeah. Being the son of Shendu. I forgot he came from oh, the future. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, there's like Queen of the Shadowcon, which takes over the girl. What's the girl's name again? Jade. Jade, thank you. Mm-hmm. Monkey King. Yep. Oh, I love Is this Monkey available King. somewhere? Can we go watch this? It, I think. It was on Hulu for a little bit. I think they might have taken it off. Oh, Such a good show. Toru. Oh, I love Toru. Mm. Um, and then who was the, the redheaded one? The, I mean, there was Vanessa Barone, who was no, no, no. blonde. Redhead villain. Monkey who, King? No, he would... Hakfu. Is it Hakfu? Yeah, it's Hakfu. Yeah, it looks like he's kind of got the Dragon Ball Z looking thing going mm-hmm. on. Because he always, he always says the name of his attack before he uses the attack. That's right. And it was always like an animal reference. That's so oh, like what a clever th- thirsty crane like reaches for water. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, what a clever show. It's such a good show. Oh my god. Yeah, El Toro Forte and um, Viper. 
who was the like on again off again love interest oh that's right mm-hmm. yeah they they become more regular because then they become the j team that's so right it's, it's yeah, Jackie. Well, because Toru, after season one, I think, joins them, right, as a yeah, hero? Yeah, he becomes a good guy. That's and right. And studies, he studies magic under Uncle. Oh, it's so mm-hmm. good. Wait, where? Where did we go? How do we go? Oh, we were talking about <laughs> Kira. No, no, no. This is now the, this Kira- is now the Jackie Chan podcast. I, I refuse. Uh... Okay, no, no, we're talking about Karari's face. Yeah. Yeah, and it, based on what I saw, it definitely had like, sort of like a Quasimodo, Elephant Man sort of thing going on. Okay. But it's very, I don't know, it's very interesting they would introduce that and then not go anywhere with it. I mean, I, I, guess, I guess it's kind of cool to have just more, just some bit of her that's a bit more that's not really consequential, that's never really explored. Mm-hmm. But then I was just left with like, well, wait, well, what's going on there? And why, like, is there some sort of relationship between her face and her being part of the League of Assassins. Like, is this something they did to her? Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm just, like, super curious about it. I don't know if we ever really get answers to it. Yeah, it was kind of a, an unnecessary thing. Yeah. And also, to kind of to your point, she's not that good, is she? Yeah. Like, Terry is a total amateur, and the GCPD are a bunch of bumblefucks. So, really, like, she's not that good. And also, how can you... So so he first says that she's the best of them, but then he follows that up with no one has ever failed. So how can you claim she's the best when everyone has a hundred percent record? I guess she's maybe killed more people. Sure. Maybe she's like killed even harder targets. I guess so. Yeah. Um now this also makes me wonder with the League of Assassins, I guess we kinda get to answer this at the end, is if they have a variety or the side of assassins a variety no, of all swords i think it looks like it's all swords based on that last little bit there which mm-hmm. i did love actually as like kind of a button on the end of the episode of her uh, having escaped police custody and then uh being hunted by her her former cohorts yeah what, what surprised me is is kind of their honor code as assassins because even if failing means death pretty much she was still not willing to attack anyone else besides batman and, and her uh, target. Well, okay. So I do have a I do have a point on that. Okay. Because because uh, like what's stopping her from just blowing up the train? Well, what happens to all the cops that are on the train? So okay, let's provide a little bit of context. The here. cops that are on the roof with magnetic shoes. Right. Because a, what a, the fuck are you a doing? A little bit of context here. So she makes multiple attempts to kill. Sam, who mm-hmm. is Barbara Gordon's husband. And the DA. Also the DA. Mm-hmm. And he's going to testify, and so some gangster has hired Karari to kill him. Yeah. That's all well covered. We'll, we'll talk more about the Barbara stuff in a, a hot second here. But, so she tries to kill him out in the park. That fails. She tries to kill him at his house, which is filled with GCPD Let's officers. also talk about how fucking nice that house is. I know, we'll get into like, that in a minute. I mean, for a cop salary and a DA salary, that is like a palace. Do you think... Uh, Bruce is still fronting some money that, that Barbara doesn't know about. I think she's too smart to let that happen. Yeah, that's and true. she wouldn't take it from him. That's mm-hmm. the other thing, too. She would never, ever take money from him at this point. Yeah. But yeah, that was a like it's huge... A nice huge I mean, I, is it actually their house, or is it like a safe house they're keeping him in? If that's a safe house, then I want to be hunted constantly. Oh, <laughs> Someone put a mark on me just so I can live there. Because you see we're like... We see... Gordon's ha- like house slash apartment in Betos, and it's yeah tiny s- yeah. And then in, in Killing Joke, it's it's almost just an apartment. Yeah, but I mean, Gor- Jim Gordon's always been like pretty depressing guy though. Yeah, his circumstances have never been grand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a huge house, but so she tries to kill him there, and she is fooled by the, all this trick in the book, a wax statue of the target you're supposed to kill. Yep, really, really loved. <laughs> Um, and then the, they are able to sneak Sam out of the city and then as they're bringing him back in, they bring him in on a metro train, an elevated train, which God, we, I love, I love me some train action, some rooftop train fights. I'm all on board but for it. why the fuck do they have so many guards? There's like six in the train. Yeah. But then there's like a dozen on the roof. All with, yeah, magnetic boots. Yeah. But so the thing is, she attacks the train and is constantly throwing guys off of it. Now, you and I loved... We love some some well-placed some, bushes. It's <laughs> some strategically placed uh, rooftop pools Shrubbery. and oversized bonsai trees to yep. catch people. 
none of these cops are getting caught, nor is Batman going out to save them. And that, the way we see that train, you know, we're kind of looking up at it from a certain camera angle, but even the amount of elevation we can see, that's got to be a good, what, like 30 feet? Mm-hmm. And then one presumes much, much more space below it. Are all those cops dead? Just from a Warner Brothers standpoint, I'm going to say no. <laughs> but we don't see them get saved, which is something they used to explicitly do all the time. Mm-hmm. And they even now still do the... Um, the, uh, the Romano Grown? Yeah, the Romano, yeah, the Romano Moan, Romano Grown, whatever. We see a lot of those still. I think they even had some in this episode. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking they're all dead. I think they're all street pizza. Like, we know in this show they're okay killing people. They killed Terry's dad. They killed Mr. Fix. Um, uh, oh so my Barbara. God. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I do. Sorry, we sorry. should talk about Barbara because this episode is important because it it does a lot. Mm-hmm. One, it finally gets Terry and Barbara to meet in the most appropriate context possible in the Batcave. Yeah. She he figures out that she's Batgirl. That great moment where she's talking to Bruce and he's like, "Wait, what are you doing here? Why are you here?" And she starts looking at the suit. Oh, I see you repaired the bullet hole. It's like. She's Batgirl. Yeah. You're Batgirl. She's Batgirl. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's just fun to one see Terry like really just blown away. It's how a fan would react. Yeah, he's kind of fangirling. Yeah, basically in that moment, and it's just it's a it's fun, especially contrasted with the reunion between Bruce and Barbara, mm-hmm. who have just such a complicated relationship at that point. Yeah, I like, forgot that. That they did date. Yeah, well, because this is where it's established. Yeah. Because when uh, Terry and her go and get coffee, and she talks about that, like, Dick was tired of being in Bruce's shadow, so he left, and he was upset when I left, or I stayed behind. And she acknowledges, like, oh, yeah, we, we dated. that bad dick. Yeah, get that bad dick. Mm-hmm. Um, stayed behind with Bruce. And well, it, I did think that it was interesting that they tried to justify it like oh yeah dick and i dated in college and then we never talked about it afterwards yeah it, it was just a fling yeah but i feel like even up through the new batman adventures that's definitely still something that's at play yeah a little bit it it makes sense when she is old i mean that makes yeah sense. It, it's less creepy when she is older but it's very creepy when we see it actually play out yeah and killing joke Oh, well, that's, that's particularly egregious. Yeah. I'm even thinking of in Mr. the Batwoman. Oh, yeah. It's super awkward. Mm-hmm. Which, oh, my God, it's it even worse when you think about the fact that the flashbacks of Return of the Joker, which you haven't seen, but you know roughly. I, I only know the Jason Todd part. Okay. But there are flashbacks in Return of the Joker that bring some closure to a lot of elements of the new Batman adventures. And that by necessity would have had to have taken place after Mr. The Batwoman, which means that I guess they are still dating at that time. Yeah. Or they've broken up, but they're still doing a thing. But just like Bruce is so shitty to her in Mr. The Batwoman. It's just like, I honestly don't know why that's in there because the whole rest of the movie is about him falling in love with, um, what Kathy Duquesne, why not just take out the whole part about Barbara and Bruce being an item? Yeah. It's like, I feel like that was put in there just to, cause it had been referenced. I don't know. I, I think it would have been better if, cause I think it would have, it would have had like a high contrast with like, Oh, me and Dick, it was puppy love. Yeah. But then I left him because I wanted Bruce, but Bruce was never open to me. Yeah. So like if it was one sided, I think that would have been okay. Cause then that would have been like, Oh yeah, he's still very mean to her. But she's almost Stockholm Syndrome at that point. That just makes it worse. I feel like that's what the killing joke more or less kind of did too, right? She was obsessed with him. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Plus, plus, let us just put this to bed. Dick Grayson is the hottest person in the DC universe. Yes. In all iterations of it. Any less than that is a huge step down, even if that person happens to be Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but no. You Stick with Dick. Always. Yeah. <laughs> if you taught me anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually going to get that tramp stamped pretty soon here. Um, but I, I do like that we finally got to acknowledge that history there. And that it also, one of the best moments I thought was when Terry's defending himself. And Bruce's like, I never asked him to do this. He's like, no, this is what I wanted. And she says, that's what we all thought. Mm-hmm. Which perfectly mirrors that ep- moment in Old Wounds when Barbara says, I'm here because I want to be, and Dick tells her that's what he wants you to think. That's his greatest trick, is he makes you think this is what you want. Yeah. Oh, so good. It is. And it's just, it just shows, like, Bruce keeps 
creating the situation, and it's really not a good thing. Like, yes, it's obviously a good thing that there are more superheroes because collectively as a team, they do a lot of good for Gotham and for the world. Mm-hmm. But it's just inherently, it's a super fucked up thing that you're taking teenagers and putting them in harm's way and convincing them that it's something they want to do. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes not even teenagers. Sometimes kids. Kids, like full-on kids. Yeah, I, mean, I think Terry's, I think, like 16, 16 and a half here, maybe even 17. Yeah. But yeah, it's not as bad as, like, Tim, mm-hmm. who's, I think, 13, I think is... Yeah, let's go with that. I think somewhere around there, yeah. But it's just like, it It was fun to see all of that finally get a chance to play out a little bit. And I feel like this did a lot in terms of fleshing out that world. And also, just I think Barbara is very interesting in this series. Absolutely. Just because she wasn't able to let it go. Like, even after she stopped being Batgirl, she still ended up becoming a cop. And she married a DA. Like, this is still her world entirely through and through. Mm -hmm. And she has this weird kind of, like, agnostic attitude towards there being a new Batman. She's kind of like, okay, well, I'm just going to let this happen, but don't get in my way. Yeah. Because even the police tend to shoot at him all the time. Both episodes, I feel like they yeah, they absolutely. put him in harm's way. They Even they're like, they don't really want anything to do with him. And she, she always waits a few seconds to be like, and she's like, hey, guys, let's... Shoot yeah. someone else. She's like counting laser shots, like one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, guys. You had 16. All right. 16 yeah. shots. 16. After they could. If you haven't hit him in 16, we're not wasting the money anymore. Yeah. The, the GCPT going to the same marksmanship school as stormtroopers. <laughs> oh, that was a great uh, single panel comic that I saw. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says The Misery of Me Sinks. From, oh, from, yes, I saw that. The Me Seeks. Yeah, the Me Seeks from Rick, Rick and, and Morty. Morty. And it's a stormtrooper like a foot away from a target as like a, a Jar Jar Binks target and all the me seeks around him just going crazy. And one of them holding the gun directly at the target. And you just see like blast marks all Everywhere. around it. <laughs> it's so good. That, I've seen that too. That mm-hmm. is absolutely great. Um, yeah. I, I also liked a uh, cool little moment when the, the finale, which I assume was going to happen on a train. I forgot that it ended up in like that meat, packing plant yeah that was weird it was kind of weird but i do love that when batman threw a whole bunch of batarangs and barbara grabbed one and threw it and even when she threw it she had that little smirk like oh, i still got it yeah and even says like oh yeah he still got the arms like yeah just like old times turns around to talk to him again he's gone yep just like old times just like old times still pulling still pulling the disappearing act on a commissioner gordon yeah so, so, so this is fun one of my quite because you that that's a really good point to bring up can she she can still fight right like yeah. I'm, I'm surprised she didn't pull her like old Batgirl moves out. Cause like I know she's old, but I still assume. I mean, I guess her. I mean, she her, also was fighting a girl with a sword. Yeah, and her Batgirl moves were pretty acrobatic mm-hmm. back in the day. And one presumes she like I would imagine that after she stopped being Batgirl, her focus probably switched more towards like grappling. Yeah, like she'd probably do like a lot of boxing. Like I'd see her totally just going down to the boxing gym and beat working the out sh- with Wildcat. Yeah, exactly. Down the, like beat the shit out of guys who are like half her age. think they're the shit. And she just trounces them. Yeah. I think that's more her style. She, I mean, she's kind of got that like bit of a boxer build to it. Mm-hmm. Actually, you know what? I'm curious now. This just occurred to me that the older Barbara Gordon always reminds me of honor Blackman, AKA pussy galore and Goldfinger. I can always find a way to tie it back into James Bond. Always. Obviously. But, like, the haircut's kind of the same. She's got a bit of that same sort of attitude, even her build a little bit. But also, I know for a fact that Bruce Tim is a big James Bond fan. Ooh. Uh, one, the fact that they got George Lazenby in as King um, in the Royal Flush Gang. They mm-hmm. threw in that reference. But also, when I went to see On Her Majesty's Secret Service... In L.A. with George Lazenby there doing a Q&A, Bruce Tim was there. Yeah. I didn't talk to him. Like, I don't, but now I have that in my pocket. If I ever meet him, I'm like, by the way, I saw this. Um, so maybe he just loves George Lazenby. But I think he's a pretty James, big James Bond fan. Okay. So this is my assumption. I want him to be. So that way I hope I someday have something to talk to him about. He, here's one of the other things about this episode that I kind of wish they would have done. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I like how they introduced Barbara into the, into the Bruce Terry relationship. Yeah. I would have loved after the first thing failed, their first attempt to capture uh, the assassin failed. What's your name? Karare, thank you. Uh, I would have loved to her having to go to Bruce being like, hey, look, I fucking hate you, but your house is the most secure place in all of Gotham. 
I'm just going to leave my husband here. Who see that could have been interesting, but I think I can give two good reasons why she wouldn't do that. One is she would have to explain to Sam why Bruce's house is like one of the most secure places in all of Gotham, which I don't think she would. You wouldn't, you don't think she would have said like, oh, he was a good friend of my dad's. He would do anything to protect me and you. Yeah. I mean, maybe, but I think, but the, what makes that place so safe is that it's Batman's house. And I feel like she would have a hard time explaining why. Well, it's also so far away from everything else. Yeah. It's, it's but it's also gated. It has security. Yeah. I, not I'm, people, but like. Yeah. I mean, I can kind of see that. I think the other thing too is. Ace. Ace is there. Ace there. <laughs> I think is she wouldn't do that. I know. But I, I would have loved like some like someone bringing that up yeah i do love though that she can still get into the house either presumably she still has a key or she just knows how to break in yeah she probably has a key do you think bruce locks it probably not i don't think so no. i feel like he probably just he hopes someone shows up so he can beat the shit out of them he he's so used to alfred just being at the door he's he, like i'm he's not never even... carried keys on him yeah ever he's like how do i he has no idea where they are i mean that was in um the dark knight rises that was a moment where when uh, um, Wayne Enterprises goes bankrupt and he runs out of money. He goes to his house and it's been like closed up and he's like, oh, I don't, I don't carry keys. Oh, I, I feel like I remember this. Yeah, because like breaking through the window or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm. Terrible film. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I just don't think she would. I think she's still, I think she's okay with Terry and she, and she even puts it like she's not mad at Bruce. She doesn't hate him, but she hates what he's become. Yeah. I just don't think she would want like to be around that sort of toxicity Mm -hmm. given how long it took her to show up. Like, I think she would never have gone to that cave to talk to them unless it was something she was personally involved in because it was her husband. She was. Yeah. I think otherwise she just would have stayed clear of them entirely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like even when she shows up, uh, at the end of the spellbinder episode, she just kind of looks at both of them. is like, all right, fuck it, whatever. And walks away. Yeah. Doesn't even go into it. Um, there was one other cool little piece of backstory. I don't know if you caught this. Um, but when Terry talks about not wanting to cross her, he's like, that's a one-way ticket back to Juvie. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you knew that, that he has like a history of having gone to Juvie. This is the first time it's referenced. And it's actually, there's a whole episode about it later on. But Okay, I think you might have talked to me about it before. Because okay. you, you, I brought up his anger issues in our first oh, Batman Beyond okay. episode. Yeah. I think you brought up that he went to Juvie yeah, before Juvie. for it. Yeah, um, yeah, I, just, I like that we're kind so of getting... thanks like, for the spoiler. Absolutely Asshole. happy to. <laughs> uh, yeah, happy to. But yeah, I, I... It's like, I agree with you. I don't think any of these are great episodes. I think they're also both really important episodes. Mm-hmm. Like, I know they'll both end up on my short list. Okay, interesting. Well, I mean, the first one, I, I have to include it just for that exosuit moment. Cause that like that, that really that squeezed so hard, hardcore squee. Uh, and then this, there's so much important backstory. And I think again, yeah. th- these are both episodes that for me work based off the relationship. And I think they add a lot of dimension to the relationship, especially between Bruce and Terry. Like in that first one, it basically shows they're both willing to die for each other. Yeah. Like Terry's willing to die to save Bruce and Bruce is willing to die or to put his life at risk to go and save him. And when Terry realizes the potential cost of him using that suit, he goes into a panic because he, he just can't let that happen. Yeah. Like in a short period of time, they've gotten that close. I mean, they would have to, like the trust they have to have with each other is insane. But I, I think for those pieces, they're worth including. I, I agree. Um, but obviously you should. I, I was, <laughs> fuck you. I was, I was trying to think of the who's se- saying fuck all the time now, Cameron. Yeah, me. What could you turn me into? Well, I am the villain of the podcast. Yeah. It's well established. Um, I, I just keep thinking of the, another random reference of the, the Samurai Jack episode where Jack fights the ninja and it's, it's the, the black and white fight scene. Oh, I've heard about this. Mm-hmm. Oh, again, so bummed it's not on Hulu. Yeah. I went to go watch it. Where? It's not there. Yeah. He's fighting a ninja in all black and then he says he's a warrior of the light. So he covers his entire body in his white suit. And then it's just fighting in the high contrast. That's epic. And I'm trying to think how we can adapt that beautiful fight scene into Terry fighting Karare. Because it is, it is kind of the same thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's an assassin fighting. I mean, he's not trained as a ninja. Yeah. But 
he he fights in the shadows. Yeah, I think I think one way to do it. You were talking about in a previous episode how they do the lighting in the club scenes really well, mm-hmm. um, where it's just like the oh constant yes. So I think if she came back and they ended up fighting in a club and like a batarang goes awry or the sword goes awry and it's like cracks one of the lights and all of a sudden now instead of it being colored, it's just black and white contrast like jumping back and mm-hmm. forth. Um, I think that could work. I was thinking even with the color, since you do have it flipping on and off. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it, still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that would look really cool. Because they, they just do a generally good job with um, with lighting and camera angles in this show. Yeah. That'd be a really awesome fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like Too I imagine like when it's off them, he is fighting. When it's on them, it, he's still dancing with uh, D- Dana. Yeah. Um, and so he's he's doing the the double play, mm-hmm. the, like dancing with two girls, kind he's, of. He's pulling the Mrs. Doubtfire or the, like, the classic sitcom trope of like, oh, hang on, let me go run off and change and come back yes, and fight. That's exactly what he's doing, but he's using the light to change his like. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, that'd be pretty awesome. But uh, no, no, I, I I still actually quite like both of these. Here's here's one problem I had with with the episode. Mm-hmm. We have this super high tech bat suit. Yes. That can do pretty much anything. Yes. You don't think Bruce put in some kind of, like, sunglass visor thing oh, so yeah. he couldn't be blinded by light. Well, I had the same problem with the um, the ink episodes, which is you would think that the suit would have a built-in, like, rebreather system. Like, you could, like, kind of go Iron Man. Like, the mouthpiece would close over and he could talk yeah. still, but then also, like, breathe through it and built-in air system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, I love that I pantomimed my hands going in front of my face and then kept talking. No, is, I, is, I got it. Which is great for a purely audio medium. Yeah. Um, and then I agree with you though. Yeah. Like th- th- that thing should have a, a lot more countermeasures built into it than it does. Yeah. Cause like solar flare is, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's the go-to super OP move. Now, can we, hang on, can we give, maybe we can justify this two ways. One, when Bruce built it, he built it for himself and he's like, Bitch, I don't need these sort of countermeasures. I'll just close my eyes. Yeah. Because I'm not I, I'm stupid. just not an idiot. And then also, we can assume that I think Terry doesn't necessarily know the full extent of the suit. Mm-hmm. I mean, one would hope he would have done some, like, training in learning all the different features of it. But like we said, he was spending so much time just, you know, dusting the Batcave. He yeah. never got around to it. My, my, my answer to it was, he's always working in the night. He has no need for sunglasses. <laughs> for, that's true. For sun <laughs> protection. That's true. No, yeah. that's not true. We, uh, in the Mr. Freeze episode, he's operating no, yeah, during I, the day. Yeah, Terry does. I was saying when Bruce built it, oh, he right. wouldn't yeah, operate like, in the yeah, day. Um, what, what, what's going on during the day? Yeah, that's my sleep time. Like a human? No. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> but yeah. No, I agree with you, though. But yeah, I, I, don't, I like these. Mm-hmm. I don't like these. Um... I do have, unless you have anything else. That, that's it. Okay, I do have a, a couple little notes from friends things. Um, so, uh, Maddie Washburn commented on, on one of our recent episodes, and he was suggesting that either Mike Coulter or Idris Elba, a.k.a. Big Driss, would be good choices for Jon Stewart. Oh, Idris Elba for sure. Yeah, but again, I think the problem is that he's too old. Yeah. If they were doing the opposite, if it was Jon Stewart, was the established Green Lantern and they're bringing in like Kyle Rayner. Mm-hmm. I think then they could do it. But I think as it is right now, they need a younger guy. But I think Mike Coulter, I think is a, a great choice. Yeah. I didn't really like Luke Cage as a show, but I liked him a lot as that character. Who, what, what's the actor from Get Out slash Black oh, Panther? Oh, um, Daniel Kaluuya? Yeah. Oh, that would I be, think re- he'd be I think good. he'd be really good actually. Yeah. Or, 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 or um, cause I, I just watched Predator. Um, oh, the Predator? Yeah. Oh, I, that's one of my plugs. Really? I yeah. don't like it. We'll get another later. Okay. Oh, uh, um, <laughs> is it Trevante Rhodes? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Who plays uh, Michael B. Jordan's dad in the flashback scenes, in in Black Panther? Sorry. Uh, he he's the no, the, the no. asshole guy from Predator. He's not in Black Panther. Yes, he is. No. Yes, he is. No. <laughs> yes, he he's is. Not. Look it up. He's not. I will. No. Ster- Sterling K. Brown. Sorry, that's what I'm thinking of. Okay, yeah. Sterling, yes. Sterling K. Brown is the uncle, yes. Okay, I thought yeah. you were thinking about the guy from Moonlight. No, 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 no. I think Sterling K. Brown might be too old, but I think the guy from Moonlight would be epic. He's awesome. That's Trayvante Rhodes, I think. Okay, yeah. Well, let me look up who that guy is, because I, I'm not picturing a face. Okay, yeah, he's the, um, like, the... Uh, the guy who's always smoking in The Predator. Oh, oh, he would be good. I liked yeah, him a lot. That's what I was thinking of. Mm-hmm. So we were both right and both wrong. Yeah. 
Um, so you yeah. can be like every other movie and just get common again because he's yeah. like but, a popular face yeah. now. I do think the the Daniel Kaluuya one, Kaluuya one, is a really good choice actually. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, he's obviously a fucking fantastic a- actor, and he knows how to do play serious well. Yeah. Um, I think he could do like the kind of the dry comedy that John Stewart does pretty well. I mean, mm-hmm. He'd be a good foil against Tom Cruise. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if you saw it on Instagram, but uh, Paul Hill has been doing some Danny Phantom art. I have been seeing He's been that. tagging us it's in. Great. It's so good. I was like, I immediately thought of you. Cause, oh, good old Danny Phantom. Yeah, he did. Um, what, what's the Vlad, Vlad Plasmius? Vlad Plasmius. That's the one he just did, which is pretty great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, oh, he also asked us uh, who would be a good character for him to do as a Batman Beyond sketch card, like he's been doing for all the other ones. Um, I think like Spellbinder could be kind of cool. Spellbinder, Spellbinder cool. or Shriek. Well, he usually does uh, chest up. Yeah, it's so usually, I feel like the cool part of Shriek is the hands. Yeah, it's true. I mean, the Shriek's helmet's pretty cool, mm-hmm. though. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just, yeah it's, what would that be like? I don't know, whatever, your shoulder's up. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just a portrait. Yeah, Spellbinder's got a good look with a swirly face. Mm-hmm. Um, the, this armor. Oh, yeah. that's a good one, actually. Yeah, the, uh, the exosuit armor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we go. I feel like if you do a series of all of the, the made-for-toy armors, I think that'd be cool. That'd be a good one. Um... Oh, and then uh, also, so Sam Gash wrote in uh, to comment on our Studio Fanfare Challenge. Because mm-hmm. we were saying that neither of us can come up with one for Disney. He said his is The Rescuers Down Under. Okay. Which, Interesting that's story. actually a good poll. That's that's a close one for me. Mm-hmm. I used to watch that movie all the time. 1990. Yeah. Good old Joanna the Goanna. <laughs> Loved it. Uh, and then, I guess we'll, we'll call this kind of a notes from friends sort of thing. But um, I think, you, are you a member of the... Um, Planet Broadcasting Great Mates group on Facebook? I am not. I keep meaning to join, but I have not join. joined yet. You gotta join. But obviously, it's the, the Facebook community that has spun out of the Weekly Planet, which is like our... What this is, but on a much Podcast lower godmother, level. basically. Yeah, yeah, like much better. It's kind of where we got our inspiration to do this. Um, this guy, Jordan Edwards, has started doing retrospectives about BTOS on there. So he just did the first one this week, which was talking about On Leather Wings. And I was like following through and like his insights are obviously way better than ours because we're two idiots and barely know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, but it's cool. Like I think one, if, I mean, kind of a series of references here, but like one, if you listen to this, highly recommend the Weekly Planet. It's something we've plugged before. They're amazing, super funny. And then in turn, join that group. It's just, it's a cool, it's a really good Facebook group. Um, everyone is like really nice and there's like good conversations happen on there and no one ever really becomes an asshole. Lots of amazing memes on there too. I'm sure because there's a whole a whole thread or like a kind of a recurring bit about people posting really shitty pro DCEU memes. Um, like there was one that came up today, and it's the um, like the distracted boyfriend. Here you you can take a look at it. Okay, but it's it's the distracted boyfriend meme, and so the distracted boyfriend is DC fans, and they're looking over at the hot girl who is labeled as. Aquaman falling from the sky going, what does it say? My man. My man. And then the, the piss off girlfriend is 19 pretty good films with really great world building. Yeah. In reference to Marvel. It's fucking fantastic. My man. So true. But yeah, that's um, some good stuff on there. That's kind of like a, a notes from friends slash plugs. Mm-hmm. But speaking of bat plugs, Cameron, what do you yes. have to plug? I, I saw Predator, but I'll leave that to you. The Predator. The, sorry, The Predator. Yeah. Uh, I also went to see A Simple Favor. How was it? I'm really excited about that. It, it's good. It's um, I I had a problem with it just because I've never seen two mystery movies so close together before. What was the other one you saw? Searching. Oh, and I like okay. Searching better than this. Okay. It's um, when I see a mystery movie like this, I like to be able to like guess the ending from what I know. Mm-hmm. And in this movie, they don't really give you the ability to do that. Okay. I don't want to know too much. I'm like, I'm I'm trying to be as cryptic as possible. Yeah. Well, cause what looked interesting to me was that it looked kind of like, um, gone girl or the girl on a train. It's it's very much in those, in that stylish. It is very pretty. Like it's funny thing is it's Paul Feig. Yeah. Which I was, I think it's been very interesting. They haven't been overly emphasizing that as part of the marketing. I think to not, I I didn't even know that until his name popped up in the opening credits. Yeah. What? No, no. Yeah. This is not Paul Feig. Well, I, I think they didn't want to like bring along that sort of connotation, that sort of baggage. Mm-hmm. Um, I think kind of in the same way when um, uh, the big short came out, they weren't like from the director of Anchorman. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
but it did look really cool. But also, just Blake Lively's like Marlena Dietrich oh, inspired, like inspired suits, like fucking gorgeous mm, in this movie. Spirit animal, right yeah. there. She is like her and Anna Kendrick are on just such. Sorry, Blake Lively is on a such another level in this movie. Yeah, where she does it so well. Yeah, I mean she is. So unbelievably stunning. And yeah. just the way that she, yeah, her, I, I want to watch it basically just for her outfits. Mm-hmm. And then my favorite part of the movie is, because I forgot she was even in this, Linda Cardellini is in the movie. I love her. Which, and she plays this like super like tough, rugged, badass lesbian, <gasps> uh, fully tatted up. Oh my god! Uh, carries a giant like hunting knife around with her wherever she goes. I'm so on board. And I'm like, oh man, I love this woman. I I I've loved her since Scooby Doo, as I'm sure you mm-hmm. have as well. Yeah. Oh, Freaks and Geeks. Even before that, I, you know, I never, I didn't watch it when it aired, and I never actually finished it. I went down and okay. watched it a few years ago. I liked it. I didn't love it. I just couldn't. I like it. I got to finish that at some point. But oh. Yeah. I mean, I guess I watched like one episode back when it came on. I also but. just recently because I've been falling asleep to Boy Meets World. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just recently rewatched. Her episode of Boys oh, was Lauren. Lauren, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the controversial Lauren. <sighs> Such a good episode. Swooping in for that kiss. Yeah. Mm. Stealing that Corey. Mm. So good. So good. I love her so much, and she's like she's so different from her normal characters in this. Yeah. Like I never, I've never seen her as a badass woman. Yeah. And she does it. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. She. It's a good movie. She has. Uh, a supporting role in one of participants' movies coming out later in the year, Green Book, Aww. which I'll, t- I'll talk about when it actually comes out. Okay. That's when I'll probably plug that, but she's really good in that, too. Yes. So, but... Yeah, everyone go see this. I, I, I would say if you have to pick one mystery film, I think Searching is, is, a, better, is a better story, but if you want something that's just, like, pure style, go then, see. then go see yeah, it. Yeah, I favorite. definitely want to go see it sometime this Either week. way, don't go see A Predator. It's the predator. <laughs> a predator. The predator. Okay, so to be fair, I got to see this for free. Okay. Because Jonathan, our good friend Jonathan of the podcast, of my other podcast, uh, took me with me to a screening. Took oh, me nice. with him to a screening. And I'm going to be honest, I had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> I know that's like what you say. That's what I say all the time. When you're painting something with, like, damning with faint praise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My, my friend's version of that is, it's colorful and ambitious. <laughs> but I genuinely... Had a lot of fun with it. It is dumb. It is really dumb. And if you give it more than like a glancing thought, none of it holds together. Right. Um, but I was just like, I was laughing through it. I thought the action sequences are pretty good. The dialogue was good. I liked the characters. I, I love Keegan Michael Key. Yeah, I thought they were all great. I, I thought, I mean, because, you know, it's like the ragtag team of like crazies come together, but they're even like ragtaggier and crazier than normal. But they are all. I thought they were all given just enough and just given just enough, given just enough to do and given just enough personality to not just like fall into really clunky tropes or to become annoying. Like I was always a little worried someone could become annoying and never did for me. Yeah, I agree. And with like, that. I think they're also like, they're really well performed. Like Thomas Jane, Keegan, Michael Key, again, um, Trevante Rhodes, you know, even like Alfie Allen's really good in it. I was convinced that the, um, uh, J- Jangles or whatever. They got the long hair and beard. Okay. I was convinced that was... Oh, the religious one. Yeah, I yeah. thought that was Logan Marshall Green, who was in um, Prometheus. He's like the boyfriend in Prometheus. Okay. He's like the poor man's Tom Hardy. Mm-hmm. It turns out that's not him. This is like the poor man's poor man's Tom Hardy. <laughs> I was like, oh my C-string God. string Tom Hardy. Yeah, there's like so many levels of this. But I don't... I, I had... It was fun. It yeah. was really fun. I thought uh, Olivia Munn was okay. Oh, yeah. I know. I I have such a soft spot for Olivia Munn just because, like, she was such an integral part of my nerd upbringing. Yeah. That... And, like, she's fine. Like, yeah. What Part of the reason I loved it, too, not loved it, I really enjoyed it, was <laughs> every time they tried to offer up some sort of exposition to explain why something was going on, it was done in just a completely throwaway manner just to kind of like answer questions, keep the plot moving forward. Yeah. They didn't try to actually get serious and bog it down and all this sort of stuff. Not even a little bit. And I kind of liked that. I liked that it was like, this is necessary, but we're just going to like throw it out there real fast and move on. And it, yeah. for me, it was mostly focused on playing with those characters and letting them just interact and do their own thing. And I thought, oh, I, yeah. I enjoyed it. I did enjoy the predator joke they told multiple times. Oh yeah. Predator like, sounds They cool. call him the predator. Yeah. But he's, but he's he's a hunter. Yeah, no, we know, but... Yeah, he's a sports hunter. Yeah. 
Predator sounds cooler. <laughs> also, Sterling K. Brown is great in it. He's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's such really, an asshole. He's really, really and like if he just it's it's surprising coming from him. Um, because I haven't watched This Is Us, and then I mean I know him from Black Panther. I feel like this is one of the things that I, I've I've seen him in. Um, but this is like such an atypical character for him. But I loved it. Mm-hmm. I think it's such what, a dickweed. One of the big reasons I didn't like this movie is like I love Olivia Munn. But I love Yvonne Stravowski. Oh yeah, and she I was love not her in... so like Chuck was such a big part I know. Of, of my life. I know. Yeah, she's she's not in it a lot. And so underutilized. Yeah, a little bit. The scene she is in, like she has one good line. Yeah. But, which still isn't even great. It's like you fucked with the wrong family. Yeah. I'm like, all right. Mm, mm. I don't know. It, uh, I have... it, it's it's a fine I, I would say it's a, it. it it fits in the category of great airplane film for me. I, yeah, it's okay. Like, it's not one I think you have to go see in theaters, and I, I would maybe give it a little more credit than an airplane. Like, it's one for me where I made a mental note that, like, when it comes out on um, on demand, like, tell my dad because he, and my brother, would sit down and watch it and have a lot of fun with it. Okay, yeah. I think if you like Predator and you liked Predators, I think you'll like this. Okay, I think it's fair. Do you see Predators? Nope. It's good. I haven't man. seen any of the other ones. Oh, what? Yeah. Fuck. Yep. We have to watch. They're Predator. all they're all on HBO. We have so to that, watch this, this week. Was going to be my no, catch no, no. up on eighty sci fi okay. film week. Don't like save that. Like that is something you we should watch with Shane. Okay. Like, for me, I think the first Predator. It's not quite as absurd as like a Roadhouse or um, like a Point Break or one of those. Mm-hmm. But it there's some tonal similarities there. I think it's a better one to watch like a group of friends. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll wait then. No, but that's the movie that gave us that great meme of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Carl Weathers like doing like the arm wrestle oh, yeah. handshake, um, which has just become so thing. I saw a great one the other day, and it was um, one side it was gay man, the other side it was uh, army sergeants, like army drill sergeants. The middle was calling grown men ladies. <laughs> Meet in the middle. Yep. So good. That's good. Yeah. I don't know. I, I would give the Predator a recommendation. It's fine. In certain contexts. Yeah. So. I'll just be artsy and see my 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 movie with the French soundtrack instead. Ooh, oh, but that's oh, that's a very French soundtrack. It is it's a very pretty soundtrack. Ooh, gotta go see it. Mm-hmm. Um I think that does it. I think that's it. That's it? Yeah. If you see either one of those movies and have opinions about them, mm-hmm. if you think that like me, the Predator is just fine and a lot of fun, <laughs> write to us. We are at Tim Talk Pod on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and a Gmail. I would recommend uh, Instagram as the best way to get a hold of us. Yes. Uh, I am personally at Lordifer on Twitter and Instagram. Same deal. All about the Instagram. Yep. Uh, if you want to see my art, you can find me at Cameron.Dexter. I'm trying to get back into drawing because I haven't been doing that for like a year. You're and doing so, great stuff. Thank you. Uh, and then if you want to see my face, you can find me at CamDexter underscore Adventures. Boom. Yeah. There we go. And we did it. We did it. Uh, next week, final episode of season one of Batman Beyond. Oh, wow. It's short. It's only 13 episodes. Wow. So we'll probably do um, the final episode as well as our short list. Sweet. Which I think for both of us will mm-hmm. probably be at least 10 films. <laughs> 10 of 13. 10, yeah. 10 films, episodes. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Whatever. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye.